And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called John. Well, that had to cause quite a stir among the, the idea. What are you doing? Breaking with we don't do that. That's tradition. And they said unto her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by thy name. And they made signs to the father how he would have called him. And he asked for a writing table and wrote, saying, His name is John. And they marveled all. I, I, I would imagine that would probably put a lot of questions in their mind here. There's a lot of strange things going on here. Here's this old lady that she conceives and bears, and now Zacharias doesn't want him named after him. I, I would bet some of them were probably thinking and wondering if he's really her father, or, or John's father. And his mouth was open immediately, and his tongue loosed, and he spake and praised God. And fear came on all that dwelt around about them. And all these sayings were noised abroad throughout at the hill country of Judea. All that they that heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child is this? Be. And the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he had visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. And as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Uh, turn over to Romans chapter 1. In Romans chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he hath promised before, by his prophets in the holy scriptures, concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. Well, here by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom ye are also the called of Jesus Christ. Well, here again he makes that point that this was spoken of by the mouths of the holy prophets, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us to perform the mercy promised to our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him in all the days of our life. And thou, child, should be called the prophet of the highest. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness, in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, and was in the deserts till the day of his showing in Israel. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar, Augustus, that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. Uh, this was an amazing thing because some of you know that O'Reilly wrote the book Killing Jesus. And the reason he gave for the crucifixion of Christ was that he didn't pay his income tax. That he was, yeah. <laughs> And all went to be taxed with every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, into the house of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, that their days were accomplished, and she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, 
and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Well, Jesus was the first of, we know, five boys. He had four brothers or half-brothers. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. Now this is this was something I used to think that I was uh, all alone in understanding a Christophany here. But then you start reading the commentaries of uh, of old, the old commentaries of the old theologians, and to find out that no, I'm not in the the minority, but I'm the majority those who believe. It's just nowadays uh, the, what they're not teaching this in the seminaries, especially uh, in the Protestants that want to They want right. And that is this. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them. And they were sore afraid. So what you have here is actually you have the Lord Jesus announcing his own birth. You say, well, how in the world could that be? Well, nothing's impossible with God. is what it says. And this is, uh, remember, that God is omnipotent, meaning all-powerful, omniscient, meaning all-knowledgeable, and omnipresent, meaning, as, as David said, no matter where I go, you're there. If I go to the depths of the, the deepest sea, you're there. If I go to the depths of hell, you're there. No matter where I go, God is there. And we laugh about that because when we hear the word pavilion today, you know, uh, today when people talk about pavilion, they talk about some place you meet in a park or square, like our, where we have picnics over at my house in the pavilion. But the word pavilion actually meant war room. That's where, in those days, where the generals would meet uh, to discuss their battle plans. And Satan, when he would meet with all of his generals, if you will, his top angels, uh, in their pavilion, I guess who would, would be sitting in with them? It would be the Lord himself. Now, folks... It's very difficult to strategize and to form a battle plan when the enemy's sitting in with you. Okay? And that is kind of how our government works today. That's, that's how it's been working in Washington, D.C., and that's why it's not been working for us. Okay? And he goes on to say, And while the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you glad tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Now, how do you know that was the angel of the Lord? Because wherever the glory of the Lord is, Shekinah glory, it's always there. It's only there when the Lord is present. And so when you have the presence of Shekinah glory, then you have the presence of the Lord. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day, in the day, city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall, you know, a lot of people think that Christ is, is Jesus' last name. It wasn't his last name. You know, he is Jesus the Christ. Okay? For unto you is born this day, in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign yeah. unto you. He shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying mm -hmm. in a manger. Now, there were four signs given in Scripture for uh, the Messiah. One would be, uh, first of all, the virgin birth. And you find that in Isaiah 7, 14. A guiding star was the other. Uh, we find that here in Luke 2, 2. The swaddling clothes which we just read here, and the fall uh, and the rise again. And we'll read that here in a few minutes. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill towards men. And, you know, one of the things I've noticed something, I praise the good Lord for this, and I know I spoke about that last week. But I'm going to a lot of places, and where I'm seeing out there where they have signs outside saying Jesus is the reason for the season. And we went by the, the store down the street, and we saw the signs out there. We thought they were selling them, so we went over there to, to buy them. And of course, they, they weren't selling them, but that's where we got uh, the nativity scene that you see in the front window out there today. And uh, But the one place 
they had the, there the hot dog place there in Warren, big old hot dog shop. They had a big sign up, Jesus is the reason for the season. But there were a number of stores uh, that had uh, the signs out there that says, you can say Merry Christmas here. So people are standing up against the political correctness, the Antichrist, that is the Antichrist system. I praise the good Lord for it. <coughs> And it came to pass, as the angel were going away from them in heaven, the shepherds said unto one another, Let us now go even into Bethlehem. And I see this thing which come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. I'm going to close it down here and then finish it uh, for the radio. You've been listening to us this morning on The Eagle 104.3 FM. That's the Liberty Works Radio Network. That's the Liberty Works and the Radio Network, the Eagle in Tampa and Ocala. And uh, we want to say to you this morning, good morning, God bless, and until next week, remember always, always, keep fighting the fight. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning the child. And all that heard it wondered of these things that were told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Can you imagine being Mary? I mean, can you imagine these things happening to you? Can you imagine that out of all the women in the whole world, God had chosen you to bring in the Messiah? And the shepherds returned to glorifying and praising God for all the things that they heard and seen as it was told unto them. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord. Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now, I want you to go over to Leviticus chapter 12. And in Leviticus chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speaking to the children of Israel, saying, If a woman hath conceived seed, and born a man, a child, then she shall be unclean seven days, according to the days of the separation for her infirmity, shall she be unclean. And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. And she shall, call the, she shall then continue in the blood of her purifying three and thirty days. She shall touch him. No hollow thing nor come into the sanctuary until the days of her purifying be fulfilled. If she be a maid child, then she shall be unclean two weeks, as in her separation, and she shall continue in the blood of her purifying of three score and six days. And when the days of her purifying are fulfilled for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, and a young pigeon or a turtle dove, for a sin offering, and to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and to the priest. We shall offer it before the Lord, and shall make atonement for her, and she shall be cleansed from the issue of her blood. This is the law for her that has been that hath borne a male or a female. And if she, do you, know, do you notice something there? To make a distinction, a male or a female. You see. Today, you've got all kinds of strange things out there. Okay? But God gave us a male and a female. Huh? Yeah. And if she be not able to bring a lamb, then she shall bring two turtles or two young pigeons, the one for a burnt offering and the other for a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for her, and she shall be clean. Okay, where did I do up to? Okay, there you go. 
And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same was just and devout for writing for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes has seen thy salvation. Well, turn over to Isaiah 52. In Isaiah 52, in verses 6 to 12, we read this. Isaiah 52, verses 6 to 12. Therefore my people shall know my name. Therefore they shall know in that day that I am. Notice he says, I am. That is a name for the Lord. He that doth speak, behold, is I. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publishes peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publishes salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth, thy watchmen shall lift up thy voice, for thy voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye, when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Break forth into joy. Sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord hath comforted his people. He hath redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord hath made bare his holy arm. In the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth, shall see the salvation of our God. Depart ye, depart ye. Go ye out from this. Touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her. Be you clean, and bear the vessels of the Lord. For he shall not go out without haste. Go out with haste, Lord. Go by flight. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your reward. And he goes on to say, Which thou hast prepared, verse 31, for the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of the people of Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled all these things that were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed him and said unto Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall, and rise again of many of Israel, for a sign which shall be spoken against. Well, he was set, in, and Mary did have the sword to pierce her heart, not in a physical way, but when Christ died upon that cross. Yea, a sword shall pierce to thine own soul, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Now there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Anuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age and had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about fourscore and four years, which departed not from the people, but served God with fasting and prayers. And she can coming in that instant, gave thanks likewise unto the Lord, and spake of him to all them that looked redemption in Jerusalem. Now this woman had been, uh, she had been married seven years, and then she was widow 84 years, so uh, that means literally uh, it had been 91 years since she had married her husband, and so she, she must have been at least 110 years old. Uh, years old. And, uh, she must have lived a good, clean life, huh? Amen. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. And someday he's coming back for all of us that have called upon his name. He always has done what he said he would do. And... He will do it. He will finish His work. And those of us that believe on Him, call upon His name, we will receive eternal life. We will be coming more. Because God has spoken it, and God will do it. Amen. Amen.